Hello, this is Miss Adams from Flamingo Math. We're going to look about rates of change today in lesson two. Let's get started by looking back to algebra one and algebra two. We know from the past that we can say the slope of a line is interpreted as its rate of change. The rate of change function can be defined as the rate at which the output quantity changes with respect to the input quantity. The graph of a function is not a straight line, and we like to use the terminology of average rate of change between any two points on its graph. In our vocabulary section, we see the definition for the average rate of change. The change in y divided by the change in x, represented as lowercase m for slope, and y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, all familiar from our previous courses. For example one, we want to find the average rate of change for f of x is x cubed minus 4x over the interval from 1 to 3. So we need to know the function value at 3 and the function value at 1. If you take the equation x cubed and substitute 3, we have 27 minus 12. 27 minus 12 gives us 15 for the f of 3. And likewise, substituting 1, 1 cubed minus 4 times 1 produces a y value of negative 3. So using the slope formula, the average rate of change is the f of 3 minus the f of 1 divided by 3 minus 1, which is 15 minus negative 3 divided by 2. Our average rate of change is 9. 18 divided by 2 is 9. In example 2, we're looking at the University of Michigan Center for Sustainable Systems that shows municipal solid waste generation. We call, commonly call that trash or garbage. It generally refers to common household, office, and retail waste, but it does not include industrial, hazardous, or construction waste. Our task in Section A is to find the average rate of change in the trash from 1985, which is right here, to 1990, which is right here, so over that five-year period. Using our slope formula, we can calculate that to be 208.3 minus 166.3, so the change in y divided by the change in x. And check me on your calculator, make sure I don't make any errors. That calculates to 8.4, and our units are in millions of tons per year. So 8.4 million tons per year. In part B, we want to answer the question, did the rate of trash ever decline in this 58-year period? If it did, when? And what was the average rate during that period? So if we inspect the table, we're looking for where values in the total waste is declining, and it looks like right in here between 2005 and 2010. So we could answer that yes, during 2005 to 2010, the rate de decreased, but we need to calculate that rate. So looking at, let me highlight that a bit, looking between 2005 and 2010, we want the average rate of change, so y2 is 251.1 minus y1, 253.7, divided by 2010 minus 2005. So we're looking at 2010. Using our calculator, about a half of a million tons 
per year. So the answer to our question is yes. During that time period, we decreased by 0 0.52 million tons per year. And you notice I used the word decreased, which took care of the negative in our example. An important skill set in our course is going to be able to read some verbal description and then to rewrite that verbal description in an algebraic representation. If you have surgery and you take a pain reliever, the level of medication will decrease slowly over time. Let's say we call capital C of T the function to represent the medicine's concentration in your body. You want to write an expression for the rate of change of the medicine's concentration level over the period from 15 minutes to 90 minutes. Can you try that on your own? Here's my representation for the average rate of change for the medicine's concentration. It's a good thing to know that unless you need a number, you do not need to simplify on the AP exam. In our final example, we're going to explore distance versus time graphs. In this case, we want to see the distance a car travels over a two-hour period. That's shown in our picture here at the right. We want to know what is the average rate that the car travels. So since the car has traveled for 120 minutes, starting at time zero, we can use the slope formula to calculate the distance that the car has traveled in that two hour period. So D of 120 minus D of our starting point divided by the entire time that the trip took. So D at 120 looks like we're at 100. The Y value is 100 for distance started here at the beginning of the journey with nothing and 120 minus zero. So we got 100 divided by 120. That can be reduced down to five miles every six minutes. So five miles every six minutes, but we haven't answered the question. What is the average rate the car travels? So if it's looking for miles per hour, let's convert five, six miles per minute into 60 minutes for one hour. And we'll have a relationship that gives us miles per hour. So the minutes would cancel and six can divide 60 10 times. So our average is 50 miles per hour, the average rate that the car traveled in the two hour window. Part B, how fast is the car going from T equals 30 minutes to T equals 60 minutes? Be sure to change minutes into hours. So just like in example A, we have the D of 60 minus the D of 30 divided by 60 minus 30. And checking our graph, the D of 60 looks like 40. The distance at 30 looks like 20. 40 minus 20 divided by 60 minus 30 gives us 20 divided by 30. And we're going to convert the minutes into hours. So we know 60 minutes is related to one hour. And we can reduce all these tens. So three goes into 60. Three divide 62, 20 times two is 40 miles per hour. 
between 30 minutes and 60 minutes. So it, the driver reduced their speed. Now moving on to part C, we want to know when is the car traveling the fastest and what is that speed at that time? So going back up to look at our graph, when does it appear that the car is traveling the fastest? I'm going to say between 70 and 90, where the slope or the rate looks the steepest. So let's go calculate that. Looking at your graph, at 90 minutes, the distance is 80. At 70 minutes, the distance is 50. We have 80 minus 50 divided by 90 minus 70. This is our average rate of change on that interval. And we have 30 divided by 20, or 3 over 2. We're multiplying that by our conversion factor, 60 minutes in one hour. So the minutes are gone. 20 goes into 60, 3, so 30 times 3 between 70 minutes and 90 minutes, the car was traveling at 90 miles per hour. Ooh, that's a speeding ticket there. In part D, what is the slope of the graph between 90 and 120? And what does the slope represent in relation to the context of the problem? I'm going to ask you to turn off the video and give this a try on your own then come back and check your work. It looks like I have 100 minus 80 divided by 120 minus 90, which is 20 divided by 30, using our conversion of 60 minutes for one hour, produces 40 miles per hour and I'm going to interpret that to say the slope is the average rate of travel on the interval from 90 to 120 minutes. So the average rate of travel. In the final question, we want to know what is the speed of the car at 45 minutes? Well, 45 minutes, if you go back and look at the graph, we can see 45 minutes is right about here, right in the middle. So if we took the speed of the graph between, I don't know, 60 and 40, because we can't really tell exactly what it is right there at 50, we could guess. But I think if we go use this ordered pair at 60, He's 40 miles away, and at 40 minutes, he's 30 miles away. Let's use that. So we would have the distance at 60 minus the distance at 40 divided by 60 minus 40. That would be a pretty good estimate. And it looks like the average rate of change would be 40 minus 30 over that 20-minute period, which is 10 over 20, or half, and half is 60 minutes divided by an hour, and 20 into 60 is 30, 3, so we have 30 miles per hour. This is going to be our average rate of change at 45 minutes on that linear function. That's the end of day one.